Hi guys, welcome back to the Downtown Den and I'm delighted to join us today is Paul Cheatham from Sedulo. And uh, Paul, amongst uh, many other things, is one of Downtown and Business's key advisors. Uh, I have to say, Paul, your team have been doing a fantastic job with us over the last few days, keeping us as informed as they possibly can. Brilliant. Because, yeah, like most business owners, mate, you're getting thrown an awful lot of information, uh, but it's difficult to translate that and what it actually means. So let me start off. Uh, Chancellor made a big announcement last Friday, whole host of measures there. Um, but again, I think an awful lot of this has come with some confusion, not necessarily his fault, but unbelievable size and scale of this thing means there's, there's bound to be some questions to answer. So what does this furlough mean for employers? What are we saying to people who uh, are wanting to keep staff on, uh, but obviously cash flow wise, we're, we're struggling to do so at the moment? Yeah, it's an interesting one, mate. I mean, my, my, my phone is going off the hook at the moment, as you can imagine. And the relative of it is most of the time it's going off the hook with people asking questions of the things that you can't answer. Yeah. So it's difficult. I mean, <laughs> just, just before we answer that question, do you mind me just giving a quick one minute of the things you, we know that you can do now? And then we'll that'd move be excellent. to some of the yeah, things we don't great. know. Yeah. So I think just from my experience over the last, uh, over the last few days, there's a certain things we, we categorically know we can do. The first one is if you've got a VAT payment and, you, and you're a sole trader or, or, or doesn't matter if you're VAT registered, you don't pay your quarterly April, May and June. So you, no, most of us are paying it on direct debit, so you've got to cancel it. Yeah. We know that, so that's the first thing to do. The second thing is business rates. We know we don't have to, the majority of us, accountants don't qualify for this weirdly, but everybody else other than me can get away <laughs> in the business rates April, May and June. So again, make sure your direct debit is cancelled. We're now going to pay them um, July to yeah, July to March. That's another thing to get that burned down. We all know personal burn rate can get brought down by having your mortgage, um, your personal mortgage uh, frozen, if you like, or a holiday period of three months. So everybody's got to do that and get that burned down. Actually, mine just come through this morning. Can't get through to them on the phone. We emailed them. I was with a Halifax. He sent us a letter today saying I've got a three-month break. So you've got to do that. In terms of commercial, because I've had this question, commercial landlords, it's by least, you know, landlord's discretion. Um, but most of the people I've spoke to who are paying quarterly in advance, I've spoke to their landlord and almost everybody right now every landlord has come back and said, pay us monthly. So that's another thing that you can do. Our self-assessments that we pay at the end of July, our payment on account, that was cancelled on Friday. So avoid, you know, you don't have to do, uh, you, don't, you don't pay that, so make sure you don't pay it. So I think there are some of the things that you can do. Oh, and a time to pay. So of the clients that have been struggling, um, where we've rang up to the government, uh, to the HMRC and said, can we have a time to pay on pays you earn? They've actually said, we'll just give you a holiday March and April and you just don't have to pay it and we'll deal with it after that. So we know that HMRC have been very lenient on taxes that are due. Um, so they're the kind of things that we know that you just should be doing today. If you haven't done them, you've got to do them. And that's how I'm opening every phone call at the moment, mate, mm -hmm. because otherwise everybody wants to discuss what we don't yet know you can and can't do. <laughs> so let's just get them out of the way first. The other one thing I thought was a big white elephant, you'll, in fact, you'll like this one, this one. You sent me an email on Friday saying, what about this coronavirus? And I said, it's an absolute waste of space. You've got no fucking chance of getting that. I think I said to you, we'll be, on, we'll be having drinks in Marbella by the time you get one of them through. It'll all have passed over. And weirdly, we got one through yesterday. Yeah, I've seen that. So one of the banks have actually allowed the, the what's it called, the coronavirus? The, the, so the coronavirus business interruption loan, which yeah. back in the day used to be called a small firms loan. It changed to an, uh, an EFG. Uh, and the bank processes have always been quite good getting that through for businesses. We, weirdly enough, but we they must have opened it out to more funders. So yeah. one of our alternative funders, a non-bank, um, they had access to it and they've literally got it through. Uh, I think we got an offer on Monday and we're drawing down this week. Wow. So if you go through your banks on that, I still believe it's a white elephant and you're going to struggle yeah. to get it because they're yeah. just going to be under so much pressure. But with, um, with some alternate funders, um, contact us or have a look out there online who's doing it. Yeah. 
yeah. some of the more boutique funders who've got access to it are able to turn it around so that is something else you can do now yeah. i guess that brings us I'll on give then. You a call after this then yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. so yeah. so they're all the things we can do and then the other thing is then we come back to friday going back to your question so what does furlough means and i'd never heard of it the word <laughs> not heard the end of it since it came out but <laughs> i'd not heard of it at the time and what i'm what what, what we gather is going to happen is, um, so first of all, you allow it's going to start from the first of March to the end of May, uh, to the end of May, but they're not going to get anything up in time now. So for your March payroll, so it's going to be March payroll as normal, um, and then at the end of April, they're hoping to pay out your eighty percent grant right. of your furloughed employees in one go. So you get March and April's right. looking like at the beginning of May. Right. So you've still got, if you're a business, you've still got to front that cash flow. Yeah. That's the first thing. I've had clients ringing me saying, I'm, I'm going to put these five consultants on. Well, it's no use because if they want on your February payroll, mm. even so I've got quite a few new starters this month, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. There's no point furloughing them because yeah. they're not going to be in it. And it's up to two and a half grand. So I think there's some of the principles. What they're saying a furloughed employee, somebody who's effectively been identified as furloughed, and I've had a bit of an issue with that, but I'll come to it in a second. Yeah, yeah. You've identified, you're furloughed, Frank. Go home and don't do any work. Yeah. That is effectively what a furloughed employee, I think, is going to be. Um, issues with that is, I have a bit of an issue identifying people who are furloughed because, you know, it's almost like if you're an employee, it's a bit like you're furloughed, you're not, you're not needed, you're not key, you're not crucial yeah. to the business. Yeah, yeah, you're not. Yeah. So I think that's the first Thing I've got to overcome mm. um, and actually we're busy never so we, we the chances are we won't have uh, we won't be furloughing furlough anybody but so that's the first part the second part which I think is a bit of a problem with is it's such a good incentive to some now if you're if you're a restaurant and bar and you're short that's fantastic in it because yeah. you just furlough your lot yeah. and you get your grant yeah happy days so he closed it down and, and he's and he's found the solution for them which is great but because it's so incentivizing to shut down yeah. i've had clients saying well i'm just gonna have to shut down and furlough yeah. all my employees and not do any work yeah. and i'm thinking that's not really what we need here not you know if you, the economy is it we're gonna start from a standstill yeah yeah so i had a recruitment agent the other day that said um that, that was on a call yesterday and they said we'll have to furlough everybody and i'm saying well, I, I get that because you're not doing any placements. Yeah. But the reality is, it is, if you was able to furlough somebody and, you know, within reason, they could do some work at all, they can still build the pipeline for when hopefully 1st yeah. of July, we're all out of this. And all of a sudden, everybody has a record July. If we're going to sit and say, you can't do any work, mm. I think it's really bad for the economy and it's bad yeah. for businesses because we've got to... We've got to go from a standing start. So I'm hoping that there is going to be a legislation that I don't know if it's going to be today or tomorrow, but there's going to be some legislation that shows a bit of leniency mm. with that. Yeah. Uh, but it allows people to take the piss the more you bring in leniency. That's yeah, I know. I know. It's trying to get that balance right, isn't it? I mean, I know you and I have spoken about this in terms of the other issue that um, you in particular, Paul, have, have focused on over the past couple of years, which is that of mental health. And my concern over the number of people who are going to be furloughed is they've already got self-isolation now. Um, and then they're being told, go home and don't do any work. Now, I can't think of uh, a worse combination for somebody who potentially suffers a bit from depression anyway, maybe going to be a bit lonely, certainly going to be climbing the walls if they've not got stuff to do. And for me, it just doesn't make any sense on that level. And the other point that you make, and the wider economic point, is the productivity levels in the UK are not great anyway. You know, if you compare our productivity with the rest of Europe, uh, or parts of Europe, it's certainly not in the top 10. So as you point that you are absolutely right to make, we need to come out of this thing and hit the ground running. And if I'm laying off half of my staff, which potentially I'm going to have to do because we're an events-led business and we're not yeah. organizing any events, mm. um, then you know that part of the team are going to come back a little bit demotivated. And of course, it's going to take a time for them to get back into the swing of things. I'd be looking over the next week or two for a bit of flexibility 
maybe putting people on part-time contracts because we can all find people to do back office stuff that we've put off and we're always finding excuses not to do. But I can't keep a full complement of staff, Paul, when we're not organizing events. That just doesn't make any sense to me. But I've got that thing in the back of my mind saying, well, firstly, it's, as you rightly said before, what's that saying to your team member? Are mm. you saying to them, you're not worth as much as the people mm. are keeping on? Yeah. Uh, and secondly, when they do come back, what state are they going to be in? 100%, mate. I mean, the thing about it is, is you've got it, while you're at home, that's bad enough. Right now, you've got to keep busy. Because I'm all right when I'm talking to you or talking to a client or doing what I'm doing. No disrespect, but the minute I turn my TV on, my fucking world collapses because let's be honest about it. There's no good news on there at the moment, is there? So you're not just sat at home, you know, you, you, with every, and, 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 and you're not allowed to go out and you're not allowed to do all these things. But the minute you put the TV on to get some respite, you know, it's constant. So... Mental, mental awareness, mental illness has already been going through the roof. God knows what this is going to do to it. But I honestly think the biggest thing is this. I could be just being positive here, but I think this is an elastic band moment where it gets retracted and, and the economy flies throughout July, August, September and beyond. So long as we're built or we've got the tools to keep going through it with less output than usual, the government are already spending that money. So yeah. they're spending that money and they've done it quite cleverly, let's be honest, on um, on Friday, mate, because they're not giving a lot away. You know, mm. if you look at somebody said to me, we'll be knackered. We've got, and I said, hold on, if just let's have a look what they've done. Here's access to cash to businesses, but you've got to pay it back. Yeah. Here's a VAT return delay, but you've got to pay it back. Here's a self-assessment delay, but you've got to pay it back. Here's a business interruption coronavirus loan, but you've got to pay it back. Here's a few peppercorn grants that are not going to amount to too much, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, and then the only thing they're really giving away is the, the, the salary grant. So that is the cost to the economy. To be honest, Paul. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and as you say, limited to two and a half thousand pounds. And, and the alternative to that is for companies to make a load of people redundant and the claim and benefits anyway, which is even worse for the government. 100%. So in a way, it's quite clever what they've done. And, it, the, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I don't think it's that bad, but what they need to do is to allow this contraction is everybody to be able to be furloughed, work within reason, and then literally, I mean, I said to the recruitment agent the, the other day, really, the 1st of July, if we're all back at work, he could be recruiting, probably not through April, right, but May and June when we know we're over the peak and we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. All of a sudden, it's like you with your events. You know, you could have a million events in July and August getting everybody back together round, you know, whether it's that, whatever it is, you can start planning probably from May, July events, when we, once we know this has peaked. Yeah. As soon as we see the light at the end of the tunnel and all of a sudden the darkness starts to remove, it's going to be one of the mother of all parties, isn't it? And that's whether you're, you won't be able to get a table at a decent restaurant. It'll be event after event. If the recruiters will all be back, you know, Here's the thing on the recruitment is candidate has been king for, for, for the last three years. Mm -hmm. At the moment, yeah. candidate isn't king. So yeah. as soon as that uh, May, June opens, that window of, say, a recruitment agency to recruit, we know they're not going to start in June, but they could be sent, they could have 25 placements on the 1st of July. Yeah. And all of a sudden, bang, they're back in, they're back in, profitability's back up. And all of a sudden then, you know, the economy's moving. And, but we're doing it off with lift off rather than, so I think it's very important, that legislation, when it comes out. Yeah. I'm not sure, Paul, whether anything's been announced yet for the self-employed. I don't think it has. Uh, and again, there's um, suggestions that he may do something there as far as business owners are concerned. Again, I, I don't know about you, mate. I'm, I'm not as concerned about that. I think that, um, you know, we, we'll, be, we'll look after ourselves as business owners. I'm more concerned about the team that, that we employ, really. 100%. But you know what it's like, Frank. Uh, every time you, every time they don't do... Every time he comes out with something, we won't go on to politics too much here, but every time he comes out with something, you can't, you can't have an answer for every single person's case, can you? No. Um, and the reality of it is, though, there's been a big sway. I think there's 4 million self-employed people out there. So I understand um, that they're being treated differently to employees. And I think the reality of it is... 
they did something yesterday, which means tomorrow in their House of Parliament, there's a bill to be passed, which allows... Yeah. I think what's effectively going to happen is they're going to, for this purpose only, self-employed are going to be treated like employees. Mm. I guess that's what's going to come tomorrow. Uh, I'm guessing he's going to take a division of time, uh, X amount of tax returns, take your average, divide it by four, gives you your quarter and says up to the effective two and a half. Yeah, you can yeah. get that income. I guess that's what he's going to do. Um, it, it will stop the lobbying in the four or five million. Mm. Um getting on his case and I understand as well you know it, it, it's fearful for them guys but yeah. uh, I think he'll do that tomorrow and that will solve that problem um, I think if he does that problem I think he can solve it like that I, my biggest problem is how do we make sure that we have bounce back that people are expecting you know if you if you look at the stock markets it is expecting a bit of a 9-11 effect not a 2008 you know, when yeah, it went yeah. down and down yeah, and down yeah. and down and tailored off for years, yeah. it's expected a huge rebound. And actually, there's a massive argument amongst my clients because we have a wealth management side and the wealthier ones are going in now because yeah. now's the time to make money. I think he went up 10% yesterday. Yeah, yeah. record climb, wasn't it? Record. Yeah. I think it was the biggest climb since 2008, yesterday's market. Um, yeah. just, just moving on to the other point, Paul, because again... You know, we, we love our politics and uh, we often talk about, you know, national governments and whether more should be done at a regional and local level. I don't know if you picked up today, I had a phone call this afternoon with Joe Anderson, who, you know, clearly is concerned about the hospitality and visitor economy in Liverpool because the city has built its regeneration uh, on visitor economy over the last 10 years. Yeah. And obviously an awful lot of those guys are concerned about that very thing you've mentioned, cash flow. I think Joe's just come up with an outstanding idea, which is a simple one, of going to the banks and saying the city council will be the guarantor for our business community. How good's that? I it's mean, the thing is, it? it is because you know, it, 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 just localizing everything has got massive benefits. Yeah. The localized people know what localized people need, whether that's business, whether it's community, whatever it is, and. Um, I think if you look at like, if you look at that, also we're quite lucky, I think, you know these people a lot more than me, but I feel like in the local areas, the sort of Leeds, Manchester and Liverpool, where we operate, the, the leaders te seem to be pretty on the ball in, in, yeah. in, in being proactive and forward thinking and, um, and in relatively normal people as well, do you know what I mean? It, <laughs> yeah. it seems to represent the societies they represent, that's yeah. what I get. Yeah. And um, so they know, therefore, what the needs are and the wants. And um, giving people that access and that power is only going to only going to assist in it. So I've, I've seen it on your Twitter before, and yeah. I thought, what a great idea! Yeah, it's a great idea. And I think you know, again, if you look when we look back at this, as we will, and see who the leaders were and who stepped up, and uh, then Joe Anderson certainly not done himself any harm, and Andy Burnham's done a great job. And after saying Birmingham, you now Andy Street's doing a sterling work as well. So. Great on them, and, and I think it just adds to our argument that the more responsibility, power and cash you can get into the localities, the better, because these guys, as you say, Paul, they know what's required in their areas. 100%. I think, weirdly, on a political thing, I've been following, and I know most of them through you, to be fair, and I've been following, I think what's been quite nice about this has been, it's been less about politics and more about people. I know we discussed last time when we did a podcast, I'm fed up with politics because I'm sick of it being too far left, too far right, too deep blue, too dark red. You know, that's kind of how it's been. And I, and I do feel like there's been a bit of a shift from maybe Andy Burnham or the, or, or the people on his kind of level where it's become more about the people than about point scoring. I've noticed even even in some of, say, Andy's tweets where he's put out, I don't think he's done enough for self-employed. He's kind of caveated it with, but it was fantastic yeah. what he did there. Uh, yeah. And I tell you what, Frank, if even if that comes out of this, we'll, be, we'll live in a better country, 100%, yeah. if, if, if that's one of the things we can learn from the scenario we're in. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, mate, I know you're busy and you've probably got about 25 missed calls already yeah. um, for spending this time with us. Great advice as always. Um, just give us um, a contact uh, address or website or something where people can contact the dealer. Because listen, I know people out there will have their own advisors, but what we're going through at the moment is unprecedented. I know how talented your team is and how diverse it is. So I know there's not a question that Sadulo won't be able to answer. Not 
putting everybody to you, mate, because yeah. you won't know all the answers, but your team yeah. will know. And I thought the point you made as well about alternative funders that you have access to is going to be you know, really interesting to an awful lot of the people who will be watching this. So how do we contact Sadulo? So you're right in what you've just said, mate. I mean, the one key, and sometimes I look around me and think how we end up, because we, you know, we're trading okay, and I'm quite positive at the moment. That might change, but for, at the moment, it's because we're so diverse in our in our advisory services, I guess. So immediately we set up a coronavirus task force. So if you go on our website, you'll see that there's a coronavirus helpline and a coronavirus um, task force, and that is the most clicked on part of our site right now. Because whether or not you use us or you use your advisor, the, the thing about this is, Frank, there is definitely not one thing that sorts your business out. Yeah, yeah. There's not one thing that sorts anyone's out. We've got access to cash coming in at the 330 billion. We don't know what that looks like yet. So the top and bottom of it is um, you need an advisor that's going to that's gonna be able to look at the 12 things on offer and see the two or three or four things that you can do right now. And that's in a way why I started this initial yeah, conversation yeah. with. Actually, here's five things. Just nail them. There might be another one thing you can do or another five things. Yeah. Um, so contact us um, or through our website if you type in, the, um, uh, I think it's got coronavirus all over it now, if I'm honest with you, because that is our main click thing. But the key to this is whether you use us or you don't, make sure you get in advice that's covering all these areas because it's going to be the five or six steps you make that's going to help you through this and come out stronger on the other side, not just access to cash or not just furloughing employees or not just getting your grant or not. You've got to try and do all of it. Yeah, spot on. Great advice. Great to talk as always, Paul. And um, you'll certainly be at one of those parties that we throw up. Good. When we get through all of this, mate. Get my name down on it. <laughs> and we'll catch up soon. Yeah, we'll catch up soon over the next few weeks. When we get you back on, we'd like to have a bit more information, but I want to talk to you about um, book recommendations because not only have you wrote a best-selling book yourself, but you've always recommended great books for me to read. So we'll do that next time you're on. Brilliant. Top man. Take care. Top man. Thanks, Paul. See you, See you soon. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you.